Have you ever wanted to be the hero of your own story? To fight against the relentless tides of evil and to have a chance to show your quality? Well, now is the time we call upon you, champion, in our hour of need. But I only hope that you are prepared. Take control of the narrative and lead your brethren in battle for the very fate of our world rests in your hands. We are waiting for you, champion. Now, would you kindly roll for initiative? We are live. Hello. 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 And welcome to Twitch Plays d and I'm your Ooh. host and Dungeon Master, Sobi. And we're glad you answered the call, champion, for this party of talented adventurers will need your help if they are to survive the deadly crypts, political intrigue, and unique encounters that we have in store for them. But you won't just be helping. You'll be shaping the campaign's future every step of the way. To do this, we've created a unique D&D campaign with a chat-controlled player. When an important decision comes up, we'll open up a poll that will be visible on screen, and you'll have 30 seconds to vote. The most popular option will be the one that the chat-controlled player will roleplay, and the story will continue from there. Starring in this campaign, we have Victor, playing as Clement, the human cleric whose appetite for good food is only matched by his cheerfulness. Alex, playing as Delphini, the tiefling barbarian whose skilled diplomacy and unusual relationship with magic may surprise you. Maki, playing as Cheek, the half-orc druid with a curious fascination of fungi, and some would say a concerning fascination for death. And of course, our chat-controlled player, Jordan. <laughs> He'll be playing as Roland, with more to be revealed in just a few moments. Today, we are also joined by the fabulous Alpha Whale and Griff, who will be voicing some of our NPCs. We'll be playing a homebrewed version of Curse of Strahd every Sunday at 2 p.m. Pacific Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. The players will be starting at level 3, and we have some very fun house rules that you'll learn over time. Finally, check out the channel point rewards at the very bottom of the chat box, where you'll find a few options on how you can further interact with the party and the story. And now, with that, let's get started. Roland, you find yourself waking up in the middle of a dark forest, shrouded by crackled black pine trees in a thick silvery mist. You find yourself having no memory of this location. An earthy smell fills your nostrils as you feel the damp moss underneath your hands. Suddenly, in front of you, a figure steps forward from within the mist, a man with a strongly calm demeanor, whose hands and forearms are wrapped with a thick gauze. As a single pine needle falls from above, whoosh, in a blur, he elegantly grabs the pine needle and balances it on one of his fingers. With that type of reflex, this person is clearly skilled in the martial arts. Then, a second figure emerges from behind a tree on your left, a man cloaked in shadows, wielding two sinister daggers. His lightness of movement shows a natural penchant for stealth and assassination. As you rub your eyes in disbelief, a third figure has appeared in a poof of blue smoke. A man wielding a grandiose twisted staff with powerful arcane energies, the three figures call out to you and stretch their hands in your direction, as if beckoning you to choose one of them. Which one do you answer? Who, who goes there? Who are you? <laughs> Excellent. This may be one of the most important decisions that you ever made. <laughs> But with a crunch under, of twigs under your feet, you slowly approach the sorcerer and grab his outstretched hand. You immediately feel a surge of energy flow through your arm 
as your vision blurs and a faint voice rings in the distance. You awaken with a light sweat on your forehead, realizing that you are dreaming, and you see that your comrade, Chikapi, known as just Cheek, has jostled you awake. It's almost midnight, and you're inside a dimly lit brown canvas tent. Would each of you, Cheek and Roland, please briefly describe your characters? My name is Cheek. I'm a half-orc druid from a human tribe called the Ash and Tree. But they exiled me a couple of years ago because... Unlike them, I'm interested in death and fungus because... There's something very beautiful about decay and how it can give life to so many other things. Death isn't the end, it's the beginning to so much more. But that's looked down upon in my village until I get rid of these mushrooms on my head and cleanse myself. I'm out here healing people and doing what I can to show that I do care about healing and life, but death is much more interesting to me. Yes, uh, as, as, as you may have known, uh, my name is Roland uh, from the, the line of Verintel. My, my family hails from, from up north in Neverwinter, and I was brought forth of noble birth after an assassination attempt that uh, took out much of my family. I was left to wander and seek answers to those who did this. I don't know why they were assassinated. I don't know who perpetrated this act. Through, through that, I got these scars that you can see, and with it, these powers that flow through me. I've been seeking a way to channel all of this, but uh, this, this magic still just flows forth uncontrolled on occasion. Now as I search for answers, we find ourselves here in this tent. Excellent. And you arise and walk with Cheek, just outside the tent's entrance, where you feel a light rain fall upon your head and shoulder. But what gets your attention is the sight in front of you, where you see a massive battle raging in the distance. With just the moonlight above you, you can only make out the flickering of torches and the red trails of flaming rock hurtled from massive wooden trebuchets on both sides. And all around you are dozens of men wearing assortments of leather, chainmail, and plate armor, most of whom are standing about chatting amongst themselves. What do you do? Do you really want to join that? Uh, un unfortunately, it seems to be our only course, course forward. Wh what do you think we should do? Uh, do, you, do you see anybody that you could help out here on the field? Yeah, you can give me a perception check. Okay. I rolled a seven. Although it is dark out, you are thankfully aided by your dark vision, and, and you're getting a better view of this campsite. You see a, an assortment of tents set up. Um, um, in them, you see soldiers moving in and out, some fully dressed, uh, ready for battle. Others uh, seem to be tending to horses and, and other parts of, of their responsibilities. But at this moment, the ground beneath you begins to rumble as you do see most of these men begin to mount their steeds and you feel the stamping of horses all around you. The faint scent of honey and autumn pierces the smoke as a man atop a black stallion trots by. You recognize him as Gilgaim, the acclaimed god king of the lost kingdom of Untha, desperate to reclaim his people's homeland. He turns back to you, Roland, and as you, you see his golden eyes and coarse blonde hair that's tied back and draped over jeweled plate mail, he nods to you while on his horse and shouts with a powerful voice. I expect you will follow soon and with haste. We must prevent Zoras from escaping at the least. And then he draws his sword and marches toward the battle ahead. Grass and dirt are kicked up from hooves and you can hear a sloshing of mud as the last of the army reinforcements follow suit, leaving you behind at your tent. In the distance lies the outpost of the enemy commander Dofel Zoras, who leads charge of the southern forces of Tymanther, your enemy. They've been separated from their main army and cornered here by the forest, and if Zoras is captured tonight, the battle will surely end and Tymanther's capital will be next. You, Roland, have demonstrated your skills before and were recruited to ensure Zoras's capture. Through this mission, its team was put together only today. 
At this moment, an older man with graying brown hair, wearing a greenish blue cloak. You see that it's Alatar, a skilled wizard who you've met before. He's been advising you on military strategy. He tosses you a thick scroll and gives you a small smirk. Roland, you overslept again, didn't you? Uh, yes, Alatar, I, I, I apologize for, for my tardiness. Uh, wh what is this that you've given me? I open the scroll. Do you open that and you see he's given you a map of the area? There's also a sketch of Dofel Zoras, the enemy commander. I'd like to take a peek at what... Well, have you made your decision? As we discussed yesterday, you have three options in getting to Zoras's camp. One, you can travel by foot, which will be a direct route and should only take, I would say, 30 minutes at a normal pace. Two, you could, if you have the skill, your, you and your team could carefully climb the trees and move through the forest to sneak up on your enemy. Or third, I could teleport us as close as I can get. Though, of course, with something like that, there will be some risk involved. Regardless of your choice, we'll have some forces laying in wait that will distract your enemy while you will get in to capture Zoras. So what say you, Roland? I would prefer if we did a little of the sneaking. You know, climb the trees. <sighs> it makes sense, but that would rely on both of our skills, and unfortunately that's not something that really has come up in my upbringing. Uh, Alatar, uh, please, if you would, bring us to the battlefront. Yes, an excellent choice. Again, although there will be considerable risk with this option, if we can capture Zoras immediately, I think we can turn the tides of battle in our favor. Is there anything that we'd need to do to prep before we do that? Do you see him even flicker through, um, looking through some books and some candles of sorts? Eventually he pulls out a number of, uh, of ingredients and you can see him scatter some of them in the air. I have started the summoning, but before we go, the rest of your team will be here in just a moment. As you see from a tent very close nearby, you see Clement and Delphini walk out. You have met them actually in just the days prior to this as Gilgaim was assembling a team for this mission. Clement and Delphini, would each of you please describe your characters? As you look at Delphini, you see her tower over a few of the heads around her, standing at around 5'11". She's a large, bulky tiefling, and at first glance she might be able to pass as nearly human if not for her particularly silver eyes that bore into yours. Dark hair that shines navy when the sunlight hits it, and, of course, the mismatched horns protruding from her forehead. Those do tend to give her away as being something not entirely of this realm, but perhaps a little bit demonic. She notices her party from across uh, from across the field and raises a giant hand and starts to work her way towards him. Well, uh, you look at Clement, he's uh, about five foot seven, so he's not that big of a fellow in height. Well, and you you take a look at his uh, waist, and it, it's kind of, yep, he's got a he's he's a bit portly, and uh, he's bald, just a hint of hair, um, a bit round uh, around the waist. He has green eyes and um, crooked smile and a chipped right front tooth. Um, he wears a tabard over his uh, chainmail and um, just a typical brown cloak with a regular shield. He seems to have a bit of lines across the face, but. Um, he seems quite cheerful and a positive and pleasant person. And uh, he's, he's uh, just uh, getting close to them right now. Wait for us. Yes, get over here quick. I turn to Clement next to me and I go, are you sure you're ready for this? I mean, we don't exactly know what we're getting into. Oh yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, this, we, we've been looking forward for this, so. Hmm. Well, I'll keep an eye on your back if you look at mine. Oh yeah, like always. I recommend that you store what I have given you in here and he hands roland a brown leather bag that has this beautiful tribal like designs on it some of which are in the shape of a face that seems to be almost smirking at you roland do you see that face uh, uh, i think yes. it's staring at me uh yes a uh, cheek it it is staring at you uh just just don't, don't mind it. Uh, it's a friendly face. A Alatar, uh, what, what is so this bag? So you're looking at me. 
Well, I am surprised that you have not seen one of these before. Oh, this is a bag of holding. And, and you look at this brown leather bag and it only seems to be but, but a foot by a couple of, of maybe seven inches. And the interior of this bag can carry things from as large as two feet by four feet deep. If you make it back alive, I would very much like it back. So you're saying that it's bigger on the inside? That is right. As a sorcerer, I thought this would be something that you are oh too familiar with. But it seems that a wizard, once again, is the better class. Quiet, you. Just finish up. How long is this taking? Yes, well, just a few more moments, and I will be ready. I will so we decided ahead. to teleport. Yes, uh, we will be teleporting right uh, as close as we can, and uh, hopefully we can catch them off guard, end this as quickly as possible. We could just land in the middle of the battle if anything goes wrong, right? There's definitely risks to do with teleporting. That, that's something that I, I don't want to think about right now. Uh, we, we don't know what'll happen, but uh, but Alatar, he, he's skilled in what he does, and uh, I have full confidence that he will put us exactly where we need to be. Uh, yeah, of course, Alatar, that's nothing on you. It's just magic in general. It's a bit volatile, is it not? Yeah, there are certainly risks involved, but I can assure you for the most part that that we will be fine. Do we know what we're walking into? How much, how much backup this captain might have? Yes, yeah, so I would say I would be prepared for the worst. That we unfortunately don't know exactly what numbers he has. Uh, but our, our biggest concern is capturing him alive. If we can get him and get the intel out of, out of his mind, that I think we can truly gain an advantage in this war. So you want him dead? But if you can capture him alive, that would be of much more value to us. And that is okay. And he gives kind of a, a little bit of a look of, of surprise. I turn to the others and I and I verify. Are you all ready? Do you have everything that you need? As ready as I'll ever be. Use, I could use a nail, but sure, yeah. Let's go. The swirling of blue magical energies seems to quicken its pace as more of these rune words seem to float up in your in your view. A misty blur sweeps your vision, and you feel this slight tugging sensation on, on all of your skin around you. In an instant, you find yourself surrounded in, in shadow and mist. Roland, do you see what is happening? What's going on? I don't like this. Uh, stay, stay calm. Don't, don't worry. I'm sure that Alatar has us exactly where he needs us to be. Uh, I reach for one of my head mushrooms because I'm getting a little nervous and I slowly go to start to eat one. I, I knock it out of her hand. I, I give her give her a slight a slight smack on the hand. It's like no, no, not, now is not the time. But but this is this is not normal. I don't like this. I feel no. weird in my stomach. No, I, I, un there? I understand. Uh, that's, also, that's a that was valuable mushroom. Now it is a waste. Well, what is it? I go and pick it up and show to Delphini. This is mushroom that will make you feel closer to nature. Would you like to try one? Yes, but not right now. Not when I'm about to walk okay, into a possibility okay. battle. The mists continue to swirl around you as they slowly dissipate, and you find yourself in the middle of a forest. And Alatar says to you, It seems that we've only gotten part way there. We'll have to travel through the forest to get the remainder of the way. So I, I pull out the map and uh, I motion for my, my party to gather around so we can all watch together. How dark would you say it is? Is it pretty hard to see? It is, um, we're just, we're past midnight right now. It is is pretty much the middle of the night. There's only a, a moon, a, a partial moon out that's providing a, a slight glow of Delphini and Cheek. Each of you have dark vision. You can see about 60 feet, so double that and as if that was dim light. So you can see uh, uh, much better than the other two. Excellent. Can we see anything of value nearby? Yeah. Perhaps anyone lying in wait in this forest? Can I smell anything? Cheek and Delphini, give me a perception check. We both rolled <laughs> like 13. So right now, although each of you can see better than the rest of the group, still most of your vision is consumed 
in darkness. Every now and then you can see this light, faint red glow in the distance off to your right in the sky, likely the vicious battle that's still being waged. I Looks am, like that way, huh? I, I say we go that way. All right, Delphine, just, um, uh, you can probably go forward because you, you can see a lot better than I can. I'm just, and I'm just squinting and looking out. I can't hey, see you can much. grab on me. I do believe that we are headed in the right direction. I think if we continue traveling, it will be just, just about 20 minutes through the forest. Uh, and I want to go ahead and prep my, my war hammer, just have it at the ready. I'd like to cast wild shape and turn into my wolf form. So you transform into a wolf. Could you describe your, the specific wolf that you look like? Yes, I am a dark, most green colored wolf that has mushrooms growing out of my back. My features, I tusks in my form, so my jaws little overbite, and my fur is matted a little bit with moss and some algae of some kind. I look a little mangy if you ask normal people. Yeah, I turn to Clement and I go, oof. Are you comfortable like that, Sheik? Uh, she she can't seem to respond when when she's in this form. Well, um, I'll, I'll keep my ears um, my ears open, you know, because that's like the only sense that I have right now. The sight is barely gone. I'm just. You travel for ab- about twenty minutes, maybe a little less. You would say soon, and it seems like almost like you've entered this sort of hidden grove. At first, you think the trees are cherry blossoms. But they seem to be different, with the flowers being much larger. I'd like to smell the air. I get advantage on perception. Twelve. Your group continues to move towards these trees as, as you in your, in your wild-shaped wolf form, with almost heightened senses of smell. And you do smell this almost sweet, honey-like smell that comes from these blossoming trees. Ultimately, the whole group of you, you, you see this sight, and you would actually think this is quite beautiful in the daytime. But right now, its beauty is almost lost amid the echoing battle cries and explosions in the distance. And as you approach these trees, you wonder what to do. Uh, I turn to uh, Altar. Um, Does this look like anything you've seen before? He closes his eyes. Yes, yes, I, I do remember we passed this grove. To be honest, we didn't think much of it. It was not part of the mission, and we continued moving on. I am no expert in in this, well, what, do, what do you call it? Triology of sorts. <laughs> what do you think, Roland? Will we get more cover if we go this way or through the trees? Uh, it, it, seem, it seems as though uh, through the trees is, is probably our best bet. They seem friendly. We, we should take a moment that uh, e- even though we are amongst war, I know that we can find beauty here. We must use this as a reminder to always look for respite in the worst of times. And Roland, you feel, you feel compelled to say a few more words, almost... I, I have composed a haiku. The trees like cherries flow through the wind like water. We find solace here. <laughs> so, the really and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> Um, it is it was five play. seven five. You know, Thank you very much. Oh my God! Could you say it again? <laughs> the trees like cherries. That's five. Flow through the wind like water. Seven. We find solace here. Five. Thank you very much. Well, it's uh, it's it's pretty poetic, you know, because um, it's like all the good in the world and. You know, and I look in the distance at the uh, the, war, the fighting, and I say, and you know, all the bad in the world, so right down the middle. I, I yeah, lean that down was to lovely. Cheek. I just... Thank you. Oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. I, I I lean down to Cheek, and I, I I get close, and I say, what's what's happening? Can can you tell us what's happening? What's what what are these noises? Oh, oh. Also, Cheek, <laughs> if you wish, you can speak in your wild shape form. Oh, I can. <laughs> Roland, that haiku is terrible. What were you thinking? 
Uh, it's uh, unfortunately in my my training, I haven't really spent much time looking at haikus and studying them. Uh, th- let's not worry about it. We we right. have we have more important things to to look at. <laughs> and Delphine starts to uh, confidently set her way through the grove, and she she kind of turns around to Roland and is like, I mean, it was. It, I commend you for just coming up with that. I I certainly couldn't do that, but uh. I don't know. Is now the time for poetry? Can you do that while we walk? For for now, maybe we should uh, keep keep our keep our focus on the battle ahead. Uh, we should we should steal our nerves, concentrate on what's coming ahead, and focus focus on the battle uh, to ensure that we can come out victorious. I would love to do like a perception uh, to make sure that we're not we're not missing anybody uh, hiding in the trees. Give me a roll for that. Eight. <laughs> Really, it's it's the darkness of the night that still gets you, and despite your dark vision, that, that even though you can see about 60 feet away, there's still this kind of blur in the, in the trees that you can't quite make out. But over, overall, nothing gets your attention of, of uh, an enemy watching upon you. I confidently stroll forward. Uh, I reach into my pack, and I pull out a torch in my tinderbox, and I, I light it up uh, so that we can perhaps see our way a little bit better. The group of you then continue onward through the forest. As you move beyond the this grove of, of uh, blossoming flowers, uh, you once again return to this oak forest uh, with, their, with their normal browns and greens of color. Soon, in the very far distance, Cheek and Delphini, each of you see a very faint smoke trail you would assume that that there would be some some sort of of camp or at least gathering of people attached to the smoke trail, um, but beyond that, the darkness is still too too thick for you guys to see. There's some kind of a smoke mm. trail coming up ahead. Do we want to try to swing around? Oh, it? you can see that too. Yeah. Hmm. Right. Yes. There could be. I think maybe going around might be best. Uh, Otherwise, uh, we're going to walk straight into someone's camp. Can I smell anything from the smoke? The smoke is a little too far in the distance to to make your your nostrils, but uh, from from what you see of it, you do you do think it's uh, either a single campfire or perhaps a, a clustering of campfires. Um, given that you were on your way towards the enemy camp, you do wonder if that's what it is. Mm. It seemed like um, you know the time that we've been traveling is. Um, We'd be getting close, or...? So you do think you're landing about on that 25, 30 minutes estimate that Alatar gave you? I, I put out the torch, um, so that it doesn't, uh, doesn't give away our position. All right. We should approach slowly, but carefully. Del- Delphini, uh, one, once again, I, I'd ask that you would lead the way, uh, but only, but only go close enough that we can see what, what, uh, the smoke is, is coming from. Not so close that they can see us back without suspicion. Right. And I, I should go stealth. I can go scout ahead. Oh, yes, yes, Cheek. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. That that would be wonderful. Uh, You're way you more mind. stealthy than me. Please be careful, little uh, doggy. A wolf. Little doggy. Right, sorry. Yes, I, I lay low to the ground and slowly approach this camp to sniff out or see if I see any enemies or any persons of interest. And you start seeing these large uh, boulders that seem to be scattered about, um, some mostly intact, others that seem to have started to crumble away to the ages. But Cheek, you, you dart through the trees and you, and you look ahead. But as you dart ahead, you suddenly hear a twig snap off to your right. Perception. I want to see. I want to smell if it's human or if it's something else. Immediately, you start seeing these shadows start moving out from the trees. Um, this actually caught you quite off guard as you were ahead. I would like Cheek and Delphini to make deck saving throws as you hear this, this splitting of air in the night as several arrows come your way. And with Cheek ahead and Delphini leading the other group, um, both of you. Are, are caught ahead. Each of you on guard for your for your enemy here. Uh, cheek nimbly in your in your wolf form, you dart out of the way, having almost seen these shadows emerge from the trees, and you get behind uh, some tree cover as well. Uh, Delphini, likewise, just this arrow flies by your your hair, just barely almost br- moving the air, um, um, kind of flowing your hair backwards. 
as you give this lunge, um, as, as a few more arrows fly in your direction, and you see some hit the trees behind you, as you see the crackling of this ancient bark in, in these oak trees around you. Um, I'd like to try to grab Clement as I, like, duck. And, and since he was trailing just behind you, uh, you're able to get him out of the, of the arrow fire as well. Cheek, what are you seeing up there? I, I need to run back to the group since I'm 20 feet ahead. So, and as you do, the arrows continue to fire as they hit the trees around you as you nimbly dodge through them. There's a lot of enemies ahead, Delphini. We can't go that way. I mean, you, you saw, there's arrows flying at us. Um, I, I guess I'd like to dive to my left into the brush, just kind of take cover. Oh, are there any trees? Wrong. Uh, you can easily find cover behind the trees, as well as the kind of assortment of b- large boulders that you're finding in the area as well. I pull Alatar behind one of the boulders, uh, nearest the, the rest of the group. What, what, what is going on here? Shh, shh, shh. There are enemies ahead. Did you not see what just almost happened to Delphini? And he darts around looking now at the arrows stuck into the trees and... Clement, what are you thinking? Do we need to try to run or should we go for it? I, I think we should charge. I'll, I'll, they already know where we are. I'll take out my shield and my, my mace and I'll get ready and I'll unseathe my glove and you can see that my hand is just scarred with like burn scars. What did the rest, what did the rest of you do? I want to try and flank them. Um, mm-hmm. So you would think if you wanted to flank them, maybe swinging around the left would be a good decision. And I'm going to swing around the left and try and flank them. I, on the on the other hand, uh, would like to split off from Clement and go in the other direction, making about as much noise as possible. Try and cause a distraction. Okay. But moving like, kind of like a zigzag pattern so that they can't exactly hit me. So you, you're swinging this, almost scraping up the bark on the trees as you're tearing it up, giving this like shout of, of, of battle cries um, as you start to see the arrows um, not as intense as that first barrage start to flicker in your direction as they hit the trees as you're still strategically staying behind them. Cheek, you you move over to the, to the left to try to flank them. You're seeing this large group uh, of time and their forces. So most of them here are are dragonborn that you get from their shape and from the number that you're seeing behind these trees at least the number that you can see uh you think right now you're you're heavily outnumbered then i'm gonna return back to the group so i can tell them what i just saw so if from the just from the shapes that you you counted um that you were thinking there's at least uh 20 if not more uh, kind of clustered behind some of these large oak trees in the forest uh so i run out to roland and I paw at his legs. Yes, Cheek, what is it? We need to we need to get out of here. There's way more than than we thought. There's I mean, I could have seen more than twenty, but I'm not sure which ones were real and which ones were not. But there are way, 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 way more than we thought. I'm talking twenty plus. Uh how how far is uh, Delphini and um Clement? from us. Yeah, I'm behind a tree and, uh, you know, just Delphine dotted and I'm, am I supposed to charge but nobody's charging? So I'm yeah. just kind of waiting to see what happens. Now I'm going to butcher how to pronounce this. Thaumaturgy cantrip? Yeah, tell me and what you like to do. So I can I can kind of boom my voice. I want to try to throw my voice pretty far ahead of me and dive back towards the rest of the group. And tell me a little bit about the noise that you'd like to make. I want to kind of do like a, like, you know, when Link like dives forward and basically yeah, any yeah. Legend of Zelda game, like a... <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. Excellent. This, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you hear almost the same noises of the, the thudding of, of arrows and trees as their gaze is, is momentarily directed towards that. You're able to easily get back to the group um, with a cover of night and the trees around you. Uh, and make your way back there. Um, Keep going. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Uh, at, as she does, uh, as she did her thaumaturgy, I cast uh, dancing lights. Uh, I cast it right around the same place where she had shouted her voice, and uh, and make them appear, and then dart around uh, in the opposite direction of where we're going, uh, off to our right, uh, to potentially distract them in that that direction. So I I start moving my hands around, and I go. Kolenaka. And these four separate orbs of this bright, uh, what color light are you sending out? 
these these will be a, a pretty natural light, uh, something similar to uh, similar to a torch, um, or uh, prob- probably uh, like a soft yellow or white, uh, some somewhere in there that could be mistaken for the the glint of moonlight off of metal armor. You almost strategically place them uh, behind trees and other spots. The arrow fire that, that has been going your way completely halts with the light that's now illuminating that area. You start to see shadows moving. Uh, further in that direction um, as you hear more kind of unsheathing of swords uh, yes uh, we we move away uh, but at uh, I, I would say at about a 45 degree angle uh, at, so like that away are, from yeah so away away from the attacks but still somewhat in the general direction of of so that we're we're kind of moving around where we assume the village of the encampment is. Um, You would sense that by the distance that you're getting, now you're only about 100, maybe 120 feet away from the camp. Um, A good sprint would easily easily get you there. And suddenly the entire forest floor begins to brighten up as, as almost for a moment you think that it appears like it's daylight. As you hear this massive pile of fiery rock and debris. As the rocks are hurtling in the air, they're breaking off and going in in many directions as the flames are already sweeping up with some of the trees. Um, Would all of you please roll dexterity saving throws? Eight. I got 15. (laughs) Well. And and you hear uh, Alatar shout as these rocks are, are flying towards your way. Take cover! And and he darts behind some of the trees um, as you see him try to cast some protection spells. Um, Roland, you duck out of the way as this these flaming rocks, um, some of which are only the size of, of you would say, you know, um, maybe even the bag of holding that you've got. Um, as they hurdle your way, as you nimbly dodge um, outside of, of their range. Um, Clement, likewise, you almost duck down to the ground, um, making your way through some of these rocks that are just still tumbling on, on the forest floor, kicking up dust and oak leaves into the air. Delphini, as you are trying to d- dodge the debris that's almost flying sporadically in different directions, um, a, a chunk of rock scratches your shoulder as you oh. take, um, please roll uh, 1d6 of damage that you'll take. And Cheek, thankfully, um, with the smallness of your size, um, you're able to just very swiftly move your way between these rocks. And I have some dice here that I'm, I'm rolling on secret. As more debris comes hurtling in your direction, this large rock hurtles forward towards Clement. Ooh. Alatar pushes you forward, Clement, out out of range as this oh, no. rock hurtles forward and it seems to crush most of Alatar's body as you see your companion's arm sticking out from, from underneath. Could I do a, a strength check to try to get it off of him? You sure can. All right, great. Can I help with that? Yes, can we get some Fs in the chat? Yes, Clement, you can certainly help with that. Some Fs in the chat for Alatar, man. You know Uh, what? I'm I'm going to help, too. I won't be much help, but... Each of you kind of make your way up to this rock as each of you tries to give a budge. Um, But finally, from from that final push of the four of you getting up to it, that you're able to just barely push it up uh, enough for maybe one of you to, to pull Alatar out. Yes, I will grab them for jaws. You're already down at ground level, being in your wolf form, as you were nudging it with your head. You grab him by his his large set of robes that he has, um, and and you're able to drag his body out with all all your might um, under there. As the rest of the group instantly lets this large boulder down with a huge thud on the ground and from your immediate sense cheek you being very close to to alatar's face and body right now that you give him this little nudge and and you honestly don't you don't see the sense of life in him damn can i go over and investigate and make sure that he's dead yeah climate you make um sure. <laughs> You oh, yeah. you stoop down and and this doesn't even require a roll because you you're able to put your hand on on, on his neck. Um, you sense that the life has left your friend Alatar. 
have the the boulders stopped coming? Uh, at this oh. point, the boulders have, for the most part, start, stopped. There's this kind of light um, smattering of smaller flaming rocks that are still coming. Perhaps just just minor minor debris from some final shots, but um, nothing like the attack that just landed on on Altar. I'll reach mm -hmm. my hand and um, I will say Zvitoi Plamia, and I will cast Sacred Flame on the body. I want to uh, um, kind of uh, ritually purify the body with the flame. Man, we don't even get to loot his corpse. What? Well, not, I'm not trying to burn it completely, just, you know. Oh, okay. okay. What? No, it's no, like no. A... Are you trying to destroy it? What are you talking about? He's dead. Uh, so I, I change out of wild form. Don't you know I have gentle repose? What? What does that mean? Just because he was dead does not mean he's dead. If I touch him and he gently falls, and we can take him back to a medic who can actually revive him, his body won't rot and he won't be, you know, deceased. So it is a chance that we could possibly bring him back. Does that mean that we have to carry him with us? Yeah. Well, probably. yeah. I mean, yes. I mean, if you don't care about him, you can just leave his body here to just, you know. So, has... <laughs> In, in in this happenstance, has has his body compressed into a two foot by four foot space? <laughs> <laughs> you would <laughs> you would say that unfortunately, although <laughs> you're <laughs> I guess you're happy to see that part of him is crushed significantly, <laughs> so, that he's quite not in a two by four. <laughs> Put space. <laughs> that would have been perfect. Uh, all right. Uh, but where are we talking on the scale of like where this body is? Are we talking like ground meat, or is he still like mostly together? From you're seeing um, bruised, bloodied skin on a, on a huge side of his body, um, what you imagine are crushed bones and and organs clearly in, inside of him. Again, no breath or life leaves his body. Right now, you're thinking that this is the worst as the flames around you begin to sweep up in the forest. Uh, Delphine turns to Cheek and oh. with a bit of a grimace looking at this destroyed body, you you can bring him back. Well, I can't bring him back, but I can prevent him from decaying or becoming undead for two days. So we'd have to get him to a better cleric, and I look pointedly at Clement, to actually bring him back. I I could heal him over the course of those ten days and try to mend his body, but he he kind of looks like mush. Uh, Chi, give me a a, med a medicine roll. Maybe get a better assessment of your fallen comrade. And you're just kind of gauging for his vitals. But the the immediate signals show to you that you would certainly be able to cast your spell and, and preserve this body, but you, you, you even question what state he would be in if you were able to bring him back. It seems that this is not worth the time or effort. We have a mission that we need to go forward on. Unfortunately, our companion, Alatar, is yeah. no more. All right, all right. Then how about suggested and loot what we can. I think that that would be wise. I think that Alatar would like us to use what we can. Every part of the buffalo, as one might say. Um, oh. well, my mother used to say that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You, you do look down and you do see that um, he still is wearing this, this large satchel of his that one of you could easily sling over you. You could look into it if you'd like, but but probably from your assumption, uh, it's a it's a smattering of of magical materials and other sort that uh, that you could possibly use. Roland, this might be most useful to you. Uh, yes, we'll 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 take it for now. Um, we we don't have time. We we need to press forward. Um, yeah. We'll we'll look through this later. Um, but for now, I'll take the satchel. And uh, is is there anything else that we can use on him? Roland, give me satchel, please. Uh, you. You already have yes, the baby holding. 
Yes, but I have. I hold all the bags, and and uh, I lift up my poncho and show that I have at least uh, six different bags: a backpack, uh, two shoulder slings, a a waist, and a small little arm bag. Uh, See, where? I have all these bags, so I just put another one. No problem. Where? Where would you put it? Uh, oh, I can put on my left hip. I don't have a bag there. You're so tiny. You're carrying all this, sh- all this shit. You're so I'm small. not tiny. I'm very strong. Sure. Yeah. I'll come on, do you, you, not, do you not see my orcish muscles? Do they not impress you, Delphine? No, I'm. I am very impressed. I, I respect your strength, little one. With a resigned sigh, I, I toss the bag over to her and say, "Fine. Let's just get going." I, uh, I take one last turn to Clement, and I go. Is there anything you would like to do for the body? Sure, uh, I mean, do we well, just leave it here? May you walk towards like. Um, I would say, um, are the flames getting closer? Are we, what, what do we see? Towards your right, uh, mostly, as it just starts to sweep around, kind of almost your perimeter. Uh, these, these large red-orange flames are now sweeping through the forest. Uh, the other thing that gets your attention is you start hearing the shouts and cries of, of battle as what you think are probably the Untherian forces, your own forces, making battle now with, with whatever time and their forces laid wait in, in, the, in the forest ahead. And I'll say, um, well, the, the flames are surely going to take care of the body, so I think we should move, press on, yeah. Agreed, we should keep moving. Now that they're distracted, we can we can see what that that encampment was about and press forward if we need. Roland, you did mention in the very beginning if there was anything else on him. The last thing you did see on on Alatar's neck was this this intricate uh, ornate gold amulet with a with a ruby laid in it, um, and you are able to easily kind of snap that off of his neck and and pocket that as you as your group continues on towards the camp. And you see a, a smattering of tents and boxes. You actually start noticing the flames starting to sweep in different directions, get, some of which are getting close to the camp. Uh, screams, clangs of sword on metal, and chaos surround you as you begin to see dozens of dragonborn actually move out of the camp towards towards the side of where this battle is taking place. Some charging headfirst into the fight with their weapons drawn, uh, while others seem to be trying to stop the advance of the flames that are coming towards the campsite. Uh, three dragonborn at this time, as, you, as you're but 30 feet away from the camp, um, charge out now in your direction, Roland. Two are, are wearing leather armor and wielding one-handed swords and shields. Um, and actually the third emerges out from the shadows behind the trees and that is actually engulfed in flames and they charge forward. Uh, Delphine, I assume you're still in front and Roland as well mm-hmm. as they both charge towards both of you and you have this split des- decision to make of what to do. I grasp at my face at my scars again as, as, as I see them running up to me. I glance over to, def- to uh, Delphine I glance back at my companions. Uh, how how far back are um, Cheek and Clement? Not from us? far at all. Just maybe 10, 10 feet or so. For the record, being the one not controlled by chat, I would like to uh, ready my warhammer to strike this flaming dragonborn that's rushing us. I would just like to prepare right. myself for battle. Yep. Me too. I'm, oh, going, I'm right. going to move my cantrip shillelagh and take out my quarter staff. So now Excellent. You, you get that out and you're preparing yourself as you see these two dragonborn run towards you. Um, as they approach even closer, the one right in front, um, as they're maybe even 10 feet away from you, you see these arrows dart towards that direction as one pierces right in its throat as it as it claws at its at, at its throat. <gasps> gasping for air as it falls to the ground. The one that was already in flames has been shouting and screaming as that one also crumbles um, under the weight of itself. This third one, still wielding a short sword, charges at you, Roland. I look at Delphine and I say, Delphine, two arms! We're gonna whack him. (laughs) Delphine, give me a roll for that. 
Excellent. <laughs> so with your war hammer, you are ready in battle stance ready as even again, Cheek and Clement were also ready to support you in any way needed. Uh, you swing forward and you hit this dragonborn right across its cheek as, as its head snaps almost immediately from the force of your warhammer blow and you hear this just immediate crack in its jaw as this this dragonborn um falls down to the ground uh lifeless f's in the chat for that dragonborn i'm sorry to him <gasps> roland we need to get out of here yes um do do you see any do you see any wait uh, where did those arrows come from you still see the scattering of shadows as what you think are your troops breaking through the enemies should we rejoin the the, the forces uh, I don't I, think I, so. no no I think we should keep going to make your way forward and you get a better sight um, here and you do start to see this this uh, scattering of, of tents um, um, some of which almost seem to be start to being taken down and disassembled all right uh, we need we need to act now uh, we, we should charge. Let's get moving. Let's and get moving. Around to make sure that everybody is still together. As we go um, away from the bodies, I also cast another sacred flame and say Svitoya Gun at the uh, at the body. And do you do you cast that on um, your fallen foes? Is that is that what you mean, Clement? Yeah. Excellent. On, on the, the one the one that um, the one that Delphini Matt, yeah. smacked over the head. Yeah. Very respectful. <laughs> Very respectful. We will murder you, but we will bless you afterwards. <laughs> um, you make your way right to the edge there, and you're able to get cover at, at boxes. Let's get some perception rolls. Great. It being night out, things are still a little more difficult. Ooh, so Ooh, Delphine and yeah. Cheek, thanks to your dark vision, the one thing that gets your attention as you enter this immediate campsite is you see a figure who's uh, darting between one one tent and another, and Cheek, um, that you do see this dragonborn that looks oh too familiar um, to, the, to that sketch, dart from one campsite to another, and you see him holding um, an assortment of, of papers and, and, and other scrolls as he darts into one of the tents that you you think is just but 15 feet away from you. He's here, he's here, he's here. We, we need to go, he's in that tent over there. And I point to the tent that I just saw him go to, and I immediately start quickly running towards, quietly of course, running towards the tent. I put my hands in my face and I go, ah, oh, fine, and and I and I start running after her, not knowing uh, what what kind of mischief she'll end up getting us into, uh, without my without my supervision. Do you really think we should just be storming into into tents? No, I I don't think so, but I also don't think that we should send Cheek in by herself, and she seems pretty determined to do that. As she darts forward, um, Clement will scratch his beard and say, Oh, here we go. So I'll take my mace out and my shield, and I'll start following her. Yeah, I'll, I'll head in as well. Yeah, my staff is still in hand, so I've still got Shalini out. So the four of you still equipped with your weapons uh, make your way towards that tent. Um, would you guys like to, to just run in? Uh, are you trying to be a little sneaky? Um, or what, what are you guys trying to do? I don't I, think I, we should draw attention to ourselves. Perhaps we should pretend to be on the other side. Uh, yes, I, I, I believe that we should we should be fairly fairly stealthy. Uh, what I would like to do is uh, detect magic oh. and see if we, we notice anything around us. Ah. So, so I, I uh, move my hands around and I go... Olekana. I throw my left hand over, over my eyes and I put my hand out in front of me in in an arc, uh, just kind of casting out this uh, this magical detection around me. Uh, and as and as my hand moves around, it's almost like a, almost like and I know that this is uh, this is anachronistic, but almost like a radar. You know, as as my hand moves around, it's shooting out in uh, a thirty foot uh, thirty foot arc in front of me. You, you're almost assessing the best way to enter this tent. Actually, for the entire part of the duration of the of this sweep, um, you don't sense any magical presence. Cheek, you, you're sure that he's in this tent? He seemed to be in a hurry. All but right. you're sure it was him? There are a lot of dragonborns running around. Yes, he's the one that looks on the paper and said he's really handsome and he has a nice touch. And I take the piece of paper that has his picture and I show it to them and point to the thing that says hot 
and has a nice stash where they've been passed out. See? So, I, I, I look at uh, Clement and Delphine and, and kind of give a, a little bit of an eye roll, but at the same time, you know, she seems determined, so I, I will I will believe her. Um, how how large is the tent that he's gone into? From the looks of this tent, now that you're, you're really not too far from it at all, um, no more than 12 feet by 12 feet. Can we see how many stakes uh, are holding this tent in? Do you would think maybe about six around the, the whole the whole thing? So well, there are multiple exits. Just the front entrance of, of this. You guys are actually um, on the side of, are looking in on, on the side of this tent. So you can just barely see this, this entrance of which he darted in. Looking around, there aren't any like reinforcements or other troops. Like they just left their commander alone. From what you, you saw earlier, it was maybe signs of, of a retreat that was in progress. Um, and from that earlier movement of the dragonborn outside of the camp, you got a sense that um, maybe most of the forces that, that would have been in here have, have moved out to uh, to wage war. I, I, I turn to my companions and I say, all right, we're going to execute a move that I've only done once before. I call it Bag It and Tag It. Myself and, uh, myself and Clement will stay on this side. Uh, Cheek and Delphine, I'll have you go to the other side of the tent. Uh, when I give the signal, we will all uh, we will all remove the stakes, and uh, we will run towards each other, bagging him in this tent. Uh, we were told to take him alive, and I believe that this is going to be our best way of doing this. He's vulnerable. We can keep uh, whatever intel he may have in there, and uh, we can keep him alive, and we can send out the signal for for uh, for our rescue and his his eventual uh, capture. What do you think? A question for you, Roland. Yes. Have you been taking my speech since? Uh, no, no, uh, not since the the last time you've seen me uh, take them, and uh, that's that's something that we really, I, I'd I'd rather not discuss. It was it was not not a pretty sight. Anyway, uh, no, no, I have not. I, I mean, can can you think of anything anything better to do? How do you plan on queuing us? Are you just gonna like give us a? Give us a word. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I'll I'll just shout out. I'll just shout out now. I mean, doesn't seem to be anyone else around here that's going to hear. And by the time that he hears it, he's going to be back. So uh, why, why don't we give that a shot? Um, I'd say we can do that. Or, you know, I can go on the other side of the tent, set it on fire. He'll come out. Delphine will smack him on the head and then bag it and tag it. So, yeah. I mean, there is a lot of fire already. It's not like that would be particularly conspicuous. If we can capture him in this tent, then he'll have no chance to, to fight back. Uh, we can still talk to him. We can get whatever information we need to. But, um, you know, if if you set the tent on fire, he comes running out. Uh, he'll probably understand that, that uh, if nothing else, that uh, our battlefront is on its way. Um, and he'll be ready for, for, for battle. It really okay. seems that we should just try and subvert battle entirely if we can. Okay, let's let's try to trap oh. him in the in the top. Okay, cheek, you and I, I on the other side. side. All right, and I I kind of cautiously walk over to my corner, just very confused and wondering if I'm having a fever dream right now. Uh, as as they're walking over, uh, I I think think better of it, and I say, Delphine, you stay on the side. I'll stay with Cheek. Um, make sure that she's doing what she's supposed to. So Cheek and I make our way to the other side of the tent. Right. Cool. So the further further side, and I assume on the way as you get to that side, you're you're kind of gently taking the stakes out of the ground. Yes. So we we want to take out the ones. Uh, we want to take out a few of them. Uh, so that it will be easier for us when we make it, but not so many that it would affect the structure of the tent before we're ready to make our charge. Right. Excellent, yeah. And actually, you think that you could probably undo m all of these stakes and still not um, disrupt the, the, the integrity of it uh, immediately based on kind of the tautness of the, of the ropes here. Everyone here make a stealth check as, oh, as, no. um, as all of you are trying to maybe undo these stakes. Um, unless you want to designate that only maybe two people or so are, are trying to do this. Um, I would recommend that it's someone who's not me. So, uh, I'll, uh, I'll... I could do it. Uh, I, yeah, maybe I'd say, not Cheek either. Yeah, I'd say uh, me me and Clement will each each try and get one side of it. 
Uh, so Clement on the close side of us and myself on the far side. In the meantime, I'll keep an eye on the uh, entrance to the tent. I have a 12. So stealth, right? Oh, you have advantage? Nine. Oh, disadvantage. Yeah. Disadvantage. I'm wearing freaking chainmail. <laughs> oh, well, dang. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is pretty loud. Should have taken that into account before I said to, for Clement to do it. And also, Clement, you probably should have told me about that, mentioned that before you told me that you'd like to do it. Yeah, I'm pretty sneaky usually, but you know. Clement, as, as one of them um, that you're trying to get through, it, it, it's quite stuck into the ground there, and you're able to pull it out with kind of a, a more of a, a strong tug than you thought it would take. Um, as your hand starts to actually, it does clatter a little bit with your chain mail. That was the last stake that you were, were able to get out, but you do sense um, a little bit of movement in this tent. Delphine gets into position and kind of draws her hair back from, from her face so that she can see clearly. Yeah. And uh, yeah. gets, gets oh. ready to tackle this. Clement as well will um, just scratch his beard again and say, Oh, Shuda. And he will cast Thaumaturgy and say, Now! And yell this really loud so that people can hear. In the back. So you, you shout this now as it echoes through oh, the wow. forest. Would you all describe, are you all grabbing part of the tent and then running forward, or? To be clear, this is kind of a rectangular tent, correct? Or like a square uh, tent? Yeah, not, it's not four square-ish. It's kind of, it is coming off. It's almost polygonal in some ways, but. E uh, each of us being in one corner of it, uh, I, I take my corner, whatever corner that may be, right or left, and I run towards whoever is across from me, uh, who I would assume would be either Clement or Delphini. Um, and seeing as we're at the edge, you know, hopefully we can see each other and not collide with each other as uh, we collapse this tent on its inhabitants inside. Yeah. Would each of you give me um, a strength roll, unless you think that you want to describe it in a different way, as I imagining each of you uh, now pulling down this tent with, with, your, with your arms and trying to sweep it kind of forward in a motion. Could I go more for like um, acrobatics? Yeah. Like, like a scoop? Yeah, totally, as you kind of nimbly dart through. And Clement, with the heaviness of, of your armor uh, and kind of that, that last pull that you did from the stake, um, I'd like you to roll with disadvantage. All right. That's fair. My acrobatics is 12. Ooh. Oh, oh, no! Oh, oh, my God! No. <laughs> uh, I, I, have, I have a nat one. Not only a fail. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. Oh, your, own, your own bagum and tagum plan. No! It's worked before. <laughs> <laughs> so you hear this. Um, what did you roll, Chief? I rolled you? 11. And Delphini, what did you roll? I got a 12 for acrobatics. And Clement, sorry? Six for me. Man, he fumbled the bag. So, <laughs> as each of you pulls up a, a large segment, as much as you can grab from this tent, um, Roland, the earlier rain that's come down and muddied up some of the dirt around you, you actually slip and fall as you're m trying to move with almost too much motion through, the, through this tent. Um, and what ends up happening is this tent collapses down um, and you see it to start hover over um, what looks like two figures that are starting to move around in this tent and try to make their way out of it. As you even see a sword come through and start to cut through the tent. Well, the sword is, I will say, Garnish your rookie and cast burning hands. Ooh. And you're casting right on the tent? I guess <laughs> on the tent where the sword has risen. Oh my god. Oh Except yeah, I focus on, on my, on my, um, on my hand that I've um, taken the, the, the glove um, off and the scars just light up a bit and as I plunge my hands forward, just flames burst out. And the flames are kind of reddish, orangish, normal? Color? Yes, they're they're kind of reddish. Yep. These flames hurtle out towards uh, the the tent, right towards where that that sword is piercing through. The flames spread very quickly through through this area, and you see these two figures start to try to push forward um, towards towards the exit of, of where the, what we used to be the exit of this tent. Yeah, I immediately jump away. Uh, I, I try to jump away, but having slipped, it's a little bit difficult, I would assume. Yeah. I do not like fire. Roland, you've almost collapsed underneath um, um, a part of the tent that's now catching a flame 
I, and the, fl the, the fire <laughs> spreads very quickly. Roland, would you roll for 1d4 of, of fire damage that's starting to kind of pierce uh, part of your skin as the rest of you do break away from, from the fire? Wait, can I try and grab Roland to pull? Yes, you can. Um, give me okay, a, I would a, like a strength check on that. Or that athletics check would be great. Oh, no. Oh, three. <laughs> Roland's fallen almost deep into the mud as you're trying to drag him out, uh, but the flames still sweep him. Um, and you see these two figures uh, dart out of the, the farthest part from you from the tent uh, and make their way through the campsite. Um, and you're just able to catch the glimpse of, of the shadows in the flames. Great, I, I dart after him. <laughs> you're able to do just that and do the rest of you. Roland, you are able to get yourself back up on your feet. Um, do the rest of you follow? Uh, uh, yes, I try to to not only catch them, but also maybe patch them up just a little bit. At, at this point, these two figures have gotten a little bit of a lead on you. Could everyone give me uh, a strength roll to gauge your your movement? Uh, strength or a Ooh, dexterity thank you. roll? Oh, oh, I could do dex instead. I'll do dex. Uh, I'll allow it. Nineteen. Oh no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Another nat one. <laughs> oh my god, are you serious? Yes, yes I am. I mean, I, I've got a plus two modifier, but still. Damn. Uh, 22 on the strength. Yes, and 19. Seven. And climbing seven for me. Let's go, Delphini. So, so Cheek and, and Delphini, your dark vision is, is aiding your movement through this camp. As, as both of you do get a better sense of where these figures have moved. And you're darting just behind them. And you do see two dragonborn. Um, one of which clearly resembles the sketch that you've seen here of Dofel Zoras. Um, and each of them seem to be fleeing into the forest. Roland, you, you run as fast as you can as, and once again slip, um, not falling all the way on your back uh, this time, but skidding into the mud again. Clement, again, the weight of your chainmail weighing you down. You're trying to slug through the unevenness of the ground here and the, and the mud around you. Cheek and Delphini, you're, you're in range to do something if you'd like to. I want to use my... Actually, I, I want to tap Dofel from behind. And because I'm short, I want to go for the back of his knees. Give me um, a, a strength roll, and then I'm going to be rolling an opposing strength roll. Oh, oh. Lord. <laughs> and as you, you do almost dive forward, he looks down as you grapple one of his legs, and he just kicks you off. Uh, as he darts forward and the other dragonborn there turns to you and swings at you. Can I have a reaction swings attack to that me? since I, I'm still running? Yes, so he swings at Cheek and you take one one point of damage and Delphine, you're right up there with them. I would like to kick him in the face. <laughs> the dragonborn that fought uh, Cheek? Yeah, or actually, I don't have unarmed on my sheet. I'll just go for my warhammer. That's that's out. Um, and I just want to kind of go for the knees. I don't I don't want to try to kill him. I want to try to break his knees. More merciful. <laughs> the one that's attacking Cheek. Yeah, perfect. Okay, Cheek, you only just barely got pierced by by this long sword that this dragonborn is wielding. And Delphini, you come in swinging with your warhammer aiming for his legs and and they seem to just buckle under once again the weight of, of this massive swing as he uh, falls to the ground clutching his legs still alive but clearly in pain and maybe you you think unable to completely move as you do this again Dovel Zoros kicked off cheek and is running further into the forest uh, Roland and and Clement, both of you have have gotten kind of caught up to this moment. Okay, so uh, how how far are we now from the action, so to speak? Yeah, so you both are about uh, 10, 15 feet away from Cheek and Delphini, who are both about another 20 feet growing on, on Dofel, who's almost, you can see this figure fading into the shadows of, of, of the forest. And what you see is this kind of floating mist uh, that's kind of permeated into the the campsite around you seeing seeing him run away uh, I try to cast chill touch to try and at least damage him a little bit and maybe slow him down roll in the last airbender that's exactly right <laughs> yeah. uh, 22 <laughs> 22 oh, nice. yeah so that certainly hits him and you can roll yeah. for damage as he's fleeing away from you 
um, one. As uh, could you describe a little bit about this uh, this attack that you that you do? I, I don't do the the swirling ball thing because uh, I've done that twice and it would be dumb if all of my spells looked like that. Uh, so so what I, what I do is uh, is I throw my hands out uh, left and right to me. I bring them in and I grasp with my own hands and that sends a, a forceful wave out that as it approaches the target turns into a hand and just grasps on to uh, whatever part it can hopefully the leg and uh, and it just chills chills the target to the bone and you do see it scrape up part of his um, his legs as you see this kind of ice almost start to form fortunately you're not able to grasp him entirely, and you see him continue to dart forward. Can I cast Chill Touch? I have it as a cantrip as well. I'll let, yeah, one more you can go. You will roll for disadvantage at this point, because okay. Dofel is continuing to kind of dart through the trees and move further away. After knocking out this other dragonborn, I'd just like to run towards him. Like, maybe in athletics or something. Towards uh... Dofel? Yes, towards Dofel. Okay, yeah, give me an athletics roll. 15. Chill. Perfect. So, Delphini, you do dart forward. Oh, 10. I'm going to switch this over to the other scene, and we can maybe show off a little bit more of our awesome dice. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love those 3D dice. Cool. All right. Also, I would like to point out that now everyone can see the poster of Dofel Zoras when, when she so was good. holding it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so now yeah. everyone can see the comments that have been scratched out. The headbutt is fatal? Yes, he has a small horn. Oh. So if he oh, headbutts yeah. you. Potion seller, enough of these games. I need a very a important potion. <laughs> As uh, as Delphine goes forward and uh, that happens, I'm just going to grab the the uh, dragon bone on the ground and I will cast Thaumaturgy again and my hat will, uh, my hand will just glow a bit and I will ask the dragon bone, I, I assume he's still alive, he just kneecap, yeah. right? He is. I will look at him and uh, I will cast Thaumaturgy and my eyes will turn red and I'll say, <laughs> where is he? Where is he going? So Delphine, you're charging forward into the forest after him, um, yeah. and, w and with the strength that you have, you're able to at least partially keep up with him. You still do see this shadow darting in into the forest as the thickness of the trees and the and the mist that seems to be rolling in is distracting you. Clement, you you catch this thaumaturgy as you almost speak like a, like a demigod, almost like Gilgaim was. Uh, as it echoes into this dragonborn's face. Not only has he fallen and dropped his weapon, but he seems uh, terrified by the look of this. And and he says, I, 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 I don't, he was just retreating, retreating into the forest. I, I know nothing else. Shove him down to the ground and leave him there and go, go join the rest of the party. Um, it looks like the weight of that attack from Delphini has, has broken at least one of his legs as he lies there uh, <laughs> in, in pain, and you regroup with the, with the, with the group. I'm going to turn back so I can heal the dragonborn oh, to at least more. splint his legs. Wow, how generous. T um, are you using cure wounds? Yeah, uh, I was actually going to use medicine. And while you do that, um, Delphini, Clement, and Roland, let me know what you guys want to do. You know what I want to do? I'm on disadvantage. You want to oh, no. tell me. You know what I want to do? Yeah, let's hear it. Uh, I, I would say that ignore after that. all of this relative failure, ignore Delphine that, is getting, that. Delphine is getting right. perhaps a little angry. Oh, still mine. <laughs> and it's time to enter a rage. Yes, it is time. So, chat, um, just to like clarify what we're doing here, Delphine is Path of the Wild Soul barbarian and we're particularly using a homebrew version which i'm dropping in the chat now so she is about to have to uh roll to see what kind of random magical thing accompanies her rage so in her frustration to uh to catch this guy delphini finds herself entering a red hot rage and starts to feel some magic exit her body magic that she's never really had much of an ability to control and plant life temporarily grows around you. These roots and vines hurling out from from Delphini. Uh, some of them start to crawl up the trees uh, around you as as others just move forward through the forest floor. Um, some reach very close to Delphel Zoras, 
Um, but unfortunately, he's a, he's still a bit further than the, the 10 or, or was it 15 feet? He was getting about 20, if not more feet uh, away from you guys, 30 feet. I now am mad. <laughs> <laughs> I yell out, go right. Delphini, I choose you. <laughs> What did I do with the dragonborn? So you're you are able to to go over there and um, and you see one of his legs from from your roll uh, has been broken. You're not quite sure exactly where the fractures are in his legs. Um, you are you are able to uh, just kind of around you pick up a there's like there's a shattered crate that you're able to just just tie something around his leg that you think will, will would help him as a as a sort of a splint uh, as he actually almost seems to push you back. You're the enemy! As he uh, almost tries to grab for his sword, but as he does, uh, the pain in his leg seems to once again get his attention. And I'm, I'm going to leave him behind and go after my party. Great, so you're trailing on. Um, the rest of you, are you continuing after... Great, so you're trailing uh. on. Um, the rest of you, are you continuing after Dafel? So so I yell back to her and I say, I say, Cheek! Cheek, transform and go get him! Yeah, I immediately go into wild shape and start immediately like sprinting after Dofel. Your, your whole party moves forward. You're moving further away from the campsite and the chaos of the battle. The flames mm -hmm. that were have now well reached the campsite and, and you hear the shouting that was getting closer and closer to that area. Um, they, they, they start to dissipate and fade in the direction that you're going. As once again, you enter a forest that's otherwise shadowed in darkness. You still just barely make out this shadow of a figure that's darting in front of you, but the thickness of the trees starts to obscure your vision, and, and more so that mist, that fog that's been rolling in, starts to roll in heavier and thicker than before, as you see a sight that looks more like this. As, as this large uh, forest of this interweaving branches all around you um, begins to get shrouded more and more heavily in this silvery blue mist. Mm. Dang. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 look, I look around. Um, so at this point, has Dofal, um, has he kind of receded so that we cannot see him any longer uh yes so uh, everyone give me a perception check Ooh, right. now i get back to advantage oh, i was about to say can i have advantage since i'm farther ahead uh yes definitely you can roll with advantage <laughs> oh 21 i have a six <laughs> 10 21 and 18 so yeah cheek you're able to to move forward you still see this sh the shadow of a figure still moving um but by the thickness of the trees it's unfortunately uh, this, this shadow starts to just disappear. Roland and, and Delphini, each of you don't longer see him. Cheek and Clement, you can just barely make out a shadow in, through the mist. Yeah, I want to sprint as fast as I can to make to close the distance between me and Dofel. And I want to try and follow his scent. As, as um, Cheek is going forward, I will try to point in his direction and say, um, it's that way. Run. And as as I continue running, uh, I no longer run after Dofel, uh, but after Cheek, seeing as she is hopefully more within range and uh, we can follow her instead of our enemy. And as we're running, I quickly throw out, the mists thicken here. Our feet are lost below us. Our enemy fled. Is that, <laughs> is that a haiku about the... <laughs> Oh my god. It, it, oh my it is god. a haiku. <laughs> Can somebody clip we that? Can <laughs> oh my god. That is wonderful. If you need any rolls, please, you can roll with advantage. <laughs> yeah, do, 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 haiku, do haikus really just like give advantage now? <laughs> You've been, it's like a You've been gifted it's fate points. Yeah. yeah, just get, yeah, get fate points for that. Points. Yeah. A fate yeah. point, yeah. 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 <gasps> yes, don't forget, it. everyone. You Each of you do have one fate point to start with this session. Um, you can oh. easily hold on to that or use it at an opportune moment. Okay. Uh, quick side quick side note. Uh, channel points should uh, should also go towards haiku writing. 
So for X amount of channel points, oh my gosh. a new haiku can be written. Oh yeah, God. chat, let us know if you have any suggestions for channel points. I think that's already an awesome one. Force yeah. one of the PCs to write a haiku on, on the spot. I think that's awesome. Oh my God, they can attack us? Yeah. They, if, if they watch enough, they can do quite a bit. More yeah. haikus, more haikus. <laughs> The next thing that you notice is this fog seems to be rolling in thicker and thicker. As we run, I, I once again cast uh, dancing lights around us. I wave my hands around and I go, Dole so manach! And I, I cast it uh, one over uh, just all four of the orbs uh, directly above us uh, to hopefully, or uh, uh, slightly in front of us, uh, maybe five to ten feet in front of us, to try and light our path as we as we continue to run forward. Okay, great. And and would you like those lights to sort of follow you as you continue forward? Yeah. So that that can go for up to uh, one minute with 120 feet of range, and it it might uh, guide a little bit further out ahead of us um, to hopefully illuminate. The biggest change that you notice is that the light coming from these orbs um, does not nearly uh, effectively pierce through uh, the, the mist and the fog around you as it did in um, earlier when Roland casts that. It does aid you slightly, but you you do see that right now this, this mist and fog is still rolling in pretty thickly. So from my barbarian path, I have lingering magic, which is essentially just where I can cast a free detect magic. As you're charging forward, you're a you are able to sense the magic around you, and you don't notice an immediate, you don't notice any strong energies, uh, but you do notice what feels like a shift, a shift of, ener of, of energies. Okay. The forest almost feels just ever so slightly magical and ever so slightly foreign. Hmm. Is it coming from the trees or more from the mist? Uh, you sense, yeah, kind of from the mist, so not, not in any direction, because this mist is, is enshrouding you. So sort of from all over. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Great. Love that. <laughs> I really don't like the feeling of this place. And Cheek? I'm going to ignore this and keep running as fast as I can after Dofel. And if uh, I get close enough to his tail, I'm going to bite him. The group continues forward, uh, still Cheek and Delphini in the lead. Everyone give me one final uh, strength check to determine your, your speeds on, oh. this, on this chase. Oh, wait, not advantage. Oh, okay. gosh. Four. A lot of fours. Can we get a four in the seven. chat? Seven, okay. <laughs> so it's seven for me. All of you feel um, not only exhausted from your mission, from the death of one of your comrades, from the fights that you've had to run through in the flames. Um, you're feeling the, the toil of all of that on you uh, as, as this mist obscures your view further and you no longer see the shadow of the figure that you were chasing. You see that the forests around you um, still mostly oak trees. The variety of oak trees seems just, just ever so slightly different. But one thing you've noticed is in this segment of the forest, a lot of the leaves from these oak trees, that the branches seem more barren than they were before. Um, versus mm -hmm. some parts mm -hmm. were, were quite thick in leaves. This area is not so much. You see just a road start to emerge from the forest as it, as it breaks away. I look over my shoulder and uh, <clears throat> look back towards uh, where the fires and the battles were raging behind us and, and I check, uh, do, do I still see them behind us? So the, the thickness <laughs> of the mists and the fog once again obscures your view. You, you are not able to see at all the flickering of the flames and you also don't hear the shouting of, of the chaos. I, I yell out to them and I say, uh, it, it seems as though we've been hit by the spell plague again. Are we are we still at the battlefront? This is reminiscent of our history. He stops running. I stop running and say, what do you mean spell plague? You, you don't know of the spell plague? Dis it destroyed scores of people and civilizations. It, it, it tore our universe asunder. Different planes of existence. People vanishing. Entire lands gone. You're telling me you haven't heard of this phenomenon? She wasn't no. a druid camp. Yeah, I've been out in the forest, out in the middle of nowhere. You guys are honestly the first couple of people I've seen in a long time. It seems that our, our largest problem is no longer 
Dofel. I think that we have something larger looming among us. Right now, I think that our objective has gone from capture to survival. You know, when you say stuff like that, it makes me feel really uneasy and really nervous. Cheek, I'm not here to sugarcoat it. I, I'm, I'm here to tell you what's happening. It's best that we all know what's going on. That's that's my best guess. I, I can't say for sure. All that I'm saying is that we need to watch out for ourselves and we need to, to find some, some road to some sort of civilization. We need to find somebody that we can talk to, that we can understand our situation. Delphine, having been running for quite a while, stops to catch her breath and goes, well, I mean, we're, we're just going to let him go. Is he headed towards the road? We should head that way. But I'm not sure if he went down that road. Can I, I sniff the ground to see or like for tracking? Yeah, give me a perception check, Cheek. 18. Um, Cheek, you, you, you move on forward and, and give the road a good s- a smell. And you're not sure if it's the scent mm. of of Dofel Zaras, but you do you do get the scent of pe- people moving, uh, maybe even food towards if you moved left on onto the road. Well, we could head down the road, and that may get us some kind of help. But I don't think he went this way. I'm not sure, at least. Roland, Clement, what do you think? Do we go after him? Do we try to find him, or do we head towards civilization? Kermit, we haven't heard from you for a while. What do you say? Well, I say um, civilization, because my, my stomach's growling right now. Oh, I just running through this forest has been pretty, pretty heavy with my chainmail on, and um, I'm, I'm down for a couple of ales. I'm, I, I'm with Clement on this one. I concur. We should, we should find shelter, we should find rest, we should find food. The question is, which way do we go down this road? Cheek. Follow me then, with my nose. All right. <laughs> I heard a toucan that said something like that once. <laughs> so I put, I put my nose down like a hound and just along the road. Yeah, so you, you sniff the road um, and you even see the few slight imprints of, of feet. Nothing calls out to you as immediately being very fresh footprints. And this gravel road leads ever further with a thick forest on each side of you, still shrouded in a silvery blue mist. You start to make out the shape of a few buildings off on the right side of the road. A large dilapidated house with what appears to be a servant's quarters and a stable, at least from what you can see at this range. But what actually gets your attention quickly is a soft whimpering ahead of you as your eyes move towards a pair of children standing in the middle of an otherwise lifeless road. There's a young girl weeping and clutching a stuffed doll. Uh, I growl. The hairs on my, yeah, the hair on my back of my neck is on edge. The the mushrooms stand straight up. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, those those stick up as you give a a, a growl. Immediately, the two children <laughs> look your way, and you can see this young girl who uh, appears to be weeping and, and gives a little bit more of a, a gasp at the sight of you, uh, clutching a small doll in her hands. Um, and, and there's a boy about twice the height of this girl, and and he's trying, uh, it seems to be trying to hush her. You're getting about 30 feet away from them. Then I'd okay. like to rush them so I can smell them and investigate, since I have. 40 feet of speed. God. I'm not going to attack them. I'm just going to sniff them. I, I, in, in panic, I run after her, not knowing what, what she's going to do. Um, me too. The children scream when the wolf appears to rush at them. But... <laughs> <laughs> Please, we need some help. There's a monster in the house. A monster? Uh, uh, yes, um, it's, something's in the basement. But, uh, my parents are there. They told us to... They told me to get my sister and my brother, but I, I only had time to get Rose. Uh, but Walter's still upstairs. Did the monster look draconic in any way? I, I, I don't know. All, all we heard was a, a growl. It, it, it shook the house. Um, th- then we were ushered up. That's that, that's all we know. I, I ran out as far as I could. Um, and, and Rose, um, well, she's been crying ever since. I, I ran as fast as I could. I'm, I'm trying to help people, but this, this mist... Uh, I haven't been able to see anyone apart from yourselves. I kind of lean over to Roland and I'm like, I mean, do you think? Like, who, what that is? Could it be our guy? I, I don't know for sure, but, uh, I mean, we, we have no other leads right now. We saw him running 
generally in this direction, did we not? I want to give these kids a sniff. I don't trust them. So to Roland, you you do, you do hope that there's there certainly is a chance that he's gone in this in this direction. So I'm sorry, who who did you say was was in the house? Well, I I live with my siblings and my parents and some servants. There's there's been some guests recently, but I I don't know if they're still around. Um, it, it'd be my parents, um, Walter, our baby brother, and uh, may, maybe the nursemaid, but I haven't seen her. Could I do kind of a, an insight check? Cheek and Delphini, go for it. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I don't think that's natural, though. I think that was actually yeah. an 18. It's an 18. Uh, Cheek, you get up in their face and you give them <laughs> almost like a, a, a sniff Ooh. as you're kind of sniffing up their clothes and, and their face. Uh, they take a step back from, from your advances uh, as you're getting up quite in, in their space. The smells mm-hmm. that you get from them, nothing unusual, nothing like, they, they smell like like people, like children. But Delphini, you, you get a discerning, a good look at their faces um, while their attention's at, on cheek as they tell the, the rest of their story. Um, and from them, you do see sincerity in, in their story. Um, the biggest sense you get from them is of horror and of terror. They do seem confused and scared right now. Hmm. Scared for their lives, almost. I want to kind of lean down on their level, like I'm a I'm a big person. I don't want to freak them out. I'm like, look, it's fine. We're fine. We're not gonna hurt y'all. Where? How far away is your house? Thank you. Uh, the, the the wolf really. It's, it's, oh, why is there a wolf here? Um, it's it's just it's just this house over here. It's it's, it's right behind us. And you do see, just another fifty feet away, through the through the mist, um, you start to see this house in the distance. Uh, so uh, I I kind of pull my cloak up over my head and cover up the uh, left side of my face, just obscure it in shadows a little bit, to try and give a little bit of uh, you know less of a horrific image to these children, um, not seeing the the scars and the, the the milky eye. As I look to my companions, I say, I mean. You know, we're, we're out here. It, it seems that this this could be that who we were pursuing. This could be Dofel. We, it's the only lead that we have. We should we should follow through. Can we find some food too? Because you know, stomach's growling. Children, do do you have any food at at the house? <laughs> <laughs> yes, in the house. Um, we, we have a, a large pantry that servants usually cook for us. Um, I, I'm sure you're an odd one. Well, there you go. Uh, Clement, kill the monsters, get the food. I think that your objective is clear. Perfect. You said your little brother was still in the house. Yeah, yes, Walter. He's He should be upstairs in the nursery. We should get the kid out first. I agree. The parents may be able to fend for themselves until until we save the child. And as you're discussing, you see, you see the mist start to thicken around you. Are there any lights on? Give me a perception check, Clement. Uh, I'd like to approach the front door of the house. Like I'm going to walk walk around the children and go to the front of the house. Perfect. So it's not too far, Cheek, you're you're making your way forward to that as Clement, you're you're looking at the house a little bit more carefully. Normally if there wasn't so much mist and fog around, you would easily just be able to see what the house is and I wouldn't have you roll. Clement, what you see is a faint flickering of light and one of the windows on the second floor. Uh and it, and then it it seems to go out. But beyond that you're not getting much much movement. Oh, I think uh, was uh, your brother on the on the last floor? Yes, yes, Walter. I I saw the light go out there. Maybe we should uh, hurry to get there. Please, you have to make sure he's okay. So, uh, yes, as as we approach the house, I mumble under my breath and I say, "Our fates have changed now. Dofel may no longer be near. We help these. Uh, no, we now help these kids." <laughs> Did he do Mate. it again? Uh, yes. wait, no. Sorry, it's Do- Dofel may not may no longer be near. Yeah, right. Uh, anyway, right. Sorry. Yeah, we're gonna have a haiku <laughs> compilation for sure. That'll be on YouTube. <laughs> it was so flawless that I almost didn't uh, notice. Like, oh, you're just you're just talking. Uh, I'd like to try and paw at the door to see if it will open if it's unlocked well so actually before you're able to quite mm. get there mm. you you ahead of the group now are making your way up to this uh now kind of cobblestone path that's leading up to 
the house here. Roland, you you are immediately wondering about what's the best way to get in. Cheek, you you do get up and you're able to to paw at the at the front door and you do see these two large oaken ornate doors with a kind of intricate carvings in them. Otherwise, nothing else really gets your attention as the group kind of clusters now behind you. Uh, the children behind all of you, still the two kind of clutching each other, almost seemingly afraid to get closer to the house. Mm. I turn to the kids and I go, uh, are you two going to stay out here? You're going to go in with us? Uh, at this point, the, the little girl starts absolutely bawling. Um, no, 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 no we, we, we can't. Rose, she's, she's terrified. We, we, we can maybe stay in, in, in the courtyard, but... Um, we ran out as fast as we could. We, we, we can't go back in there. At this point, Lemon just takes out one of his rations and kind of starts chewing on it. Uh, <laughs> Looks awkwardly towards the children. Uh, are you hungry? Maybe. <laughs> just trying to offer them some food. No, no, thank you. Uh, I don't have time for that right now. Well, uh, if they're not going to take it, I'm going to bite up at at Clement's hand to get some of his rations. All right, I'll, I'll gladly share it, and I'm just wiping my my mouth. And... All right, let's go. So, uh, with with that, I, I I look at the team and I say, we we clearly can't go through this uh, this front door. That's exactly what everyone will be expecting. We we need to we need to find a different way in. Look around uh, with the with the windows. And uh, and we're just gonna we're just gonna smash our way in, and then uh, and then I'll have Cheek jump through, uh, jump through said smash window just like Silent Hill, um, you know, just scary dog entering through a window sort of a thing. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, perhaps I can perceive a good window for jumping into. You do see on the far right um if you're looking at the image there seems to be a, a window that is uh open somewhat and one that you think you could pro you could easily break the glass there and, and make your way inside uh what room are we going into that's the kitchen but the front door is fine yeah did no one check to open the front door i hands here what's uh, the style in that if there's a monster i don't know if we want to just go through the front door you're the adults i guess I mean, you know, when when the bards when the bards end up inevitably writing the tale of this of this, what's going to be better, uh, jumping through the window, or or just you know sauntering through the front door? Really, we we need to make a story out of this. What? What are you talking about? And I kind of duck down next to next to cheek, and I just say, "Trust me, something something is telling me." We'd better go through the window. Just trust me. It's it's a gut feeling. You've seen how every other every other thing that we've done today has gone so well. Just trust me. Trust me. This Delphine one time. Delphine thinks back to the tent. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Has it gone well? Bag him and grab him, Rosa. <laughs> yeah, bag him and grab him. But ultimately, bag him and tag him. <laughs> bag him and tag him. <laughs> all right, all right, fine. We'll go with your plan. Thank you. And you do look in and you do see uh, what looks like a, a kitchen, uh, as you see an assortment of old dishware and cookware about um, a, 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 what looks like a work table with a cutting board. The, the window that you're looking through has kind of two panes that open up, uh, one that is slightly ajar, more of enough to just kind of let a gentle breeze in. Uh, so you would think you'd, you would need to, s to smash this window to get in. That's where you come in, Delphini. Let's do it. Uh, I'm not trying to like spread glass in the room that we're about to enter, so like a... I just want to give it a good little tap, like enough to crack it. And so you do that, and you do hear the, the shattering of glass um, as gently as you can. And and with that gap now in there, you think you could make your way inside. Are you ready to hoist me in? Uh, sure, fine. Is this still a wolf? Right, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that <laughs> if she was in orc form. <laughs> that would, that would be infinitely more awkward. <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> and... I'll just look at the kids and see if they're distressed or. No, they're just Some... overly concerned with the damage to their house. I, I, I look out, the, I look out the window and I say, find, find somewhere safe, uh, stay out of sight. We'll be back out as quickly as possible. Just keep yourselves safe. 
Thank you. We'll be right here. I'll, I'll, I'll protect Rose. Each of you then make your way through the broken window. A slight crunch of glass under underneath you. Clement, you do survey the surroundings and you do see a pantry on your left that, that gets your attention. Um, but as that happens, all of you hear a slight moaning. A sort of... Uh, that's coming from... Uh, a doorway that's in the kitchen that seems to be leading out to what you can see as a part of a table, maybe a dining room. And as you hear this moaning echoing through this this house, we're going to end our session there. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I noticed in the chat, Alpha Whale said, they asked some strangers for help. They <laughs> broke a window and are hoisting a wolf into the kitchen. <laughs> Classic adventure stuff. It. Classic. <laughs> That's D and D. I know. I personally love watching D and D streams. I always wish that maybe I could have some sort of say or influence in the story, and that would just be so fun to have that level of connection. So that's exactly what we're trying to do here. A huge, huge, huge thanks to everyone who's been involved in this idea. We have a lot of really talented writers. Huge thanks to Mighty Maki, who is one of our PCs in here. Cheek. Um, so all the PCs and the NPCs, anything you've seen up there has been her work, so please check her out. Huge thanks to Hop Hunter, who's helped us with some of our marketing materials and our logo, um, our talented mods, our great NPCs from Alpha Whale to Griff. Without the support of these people, um, I don't think we could have delivered the level of quality that we got today. Everyone with an asterisk next to their name has a Twitch channel, so check out the awesome content that they're putting out. Um, and then everyone else who doesn't, most of these folks here, you could search these usernames on Twitter uh, and check out still the, the amazing things that they're working on and promoting on their own. Again, every Sunday, 2 p.m. Pacific time, we're gonna be live here. Uh, so please, we hope that you can continue to be there to help us guide the story. And we'll see you in one week. Twitch plays D&D. Bye. Bye. Bye.